And we're going to start a client application to show you how the application connects to the server. It's connecting to SQL uh, in one. We pull the primary VM off of the public network just simply by going into the network settings and disconnecting or, or unchecking the checkbox that says connected. Okay, so that guy's offline. So now in just a few minutes, or just a few seconds, we're gonna see the client application fail. And notice the build, it says uh, 1600.1. All right, so we're down during this period of time. Next thing we do is hot remove the resource from the primary VM. And that is just as simple as taking the network offline. You essentially go in to the properties of the virtual machine, go into the, the uh, I might be getting ahead of myself here. Ah, we detached the database first, my fault. Before we can take the disk offline, we have to take the database offline or we could suffer corruption. So we're gonna take these Transact SQL scripts and detach the database before we do any disk operations. Okay, so we run the scripts. So the database is now detached. Next thing we do is take the disk offline within Disk Manager within Windows. Offline. Now we can remove the VMDK. And again, you go to Properties, you go to the disk, and you essentially remove it. Now look at this, I'm gonna stop it right there. Let me get my pointer. This is very important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do not check, remove from virtual machine and delete files from disk. <laughs> Unpause. Okay, so the data is still there and the disk is available to be connected to your, to your uh, secondary VM or your standby VM. Okay, so basically here, now we, we do everything in reverse. We attach the previous VMDK to the standby VM. Just by adding it, we browse to the data store where that VMDK is located. And we bring the disk online through, through Disk Manager. Then the next step is, and I'll kind of go through this because we're running out of time. So basically what we're going to do next is reattach the database, reattach the NIC, and then you will see the client reconnect to the new database. So that's reattaching the database. We make sure the IP address is the same as the previous primary. Now notice that the build has changed. All right, now let's look at the same process in an automated fashion. We use VCAC, and we use uh, vCenter Orchestrator to do all, all the hard work. We use VCAC for the front end. So you browse through and you look for My Machines. Now notice this pop-up. 
pop up right there. We don't see anything about SQL Server. But when we go down to an actual SQL Server, notice, perform SQL rolling upgrade. We did that through a Visual Studio um, project by which it, it literally goes out and checks the application that's running. And if it's SQL Server, it allows you to do perform SQL rolling update. Real easy, nice administrative interface uh, for a DBA to use. We can say we want to migrate to Spring Trader database. We want to migrate it to this particular VM. We click OK. And a few minutes later, we're done. All of those tasks, what, 15, 20 tasks that we did, completely automated with between 30 seconds, maybe a minute of downtime for the SQL Server. Really nice, robust solution, and we don't have to use Microsoft clustering to do it. So let me finish up with just a few slides.